real-time industry that we're in, and without real-time reporting, real-time trafficking, and real-time bidding, we can't do our job. And so for the first time in the industry, one platform can do all three. Now next up, I'd like to introduce Pat McCarthy, our Senior Vice President of Product. Pat, take it away. Thank you, Brian. Uh, that was fantastic, really exciting. Um, so I'm really happy to be here to talk more about deals today. Uh, but I'm also really happy to be here in London. Uh, see, being from America, there isn't a lot of history when you walk around. And as I walk around the streets of London, I just look at the buildings, the cobblestone streets, the statues, the cathedrals, and I just feel a real sense of place and think about all the things that have happened here that you know, people living throughout the years. But because I only think about online advertising, like the rest of you, as I walk around, I go, you know, this building was built by two parties coming together, agreeing on terms, negotiating perhaps, and then ending it with a deal, right? And they seal that deal with a handshake. Simple handshake, work starts, beautiful building ends up being built. Now in online advertising, it hasn't been that simple, right? As RTB started to explode, we, ha we had buyers and sellers you know, putting in bids, not really knowing what they were gonna end up buying, which site it was going to end up on. Uh, the sellers really didn't know who was buying them, you know, what price they were actually going to get. Imagine trying to build St. Paul's Cathedral without knowing who was going to deliver your materials, what price you were gonna get, when those materials were gonna show up. I mean, it would have ended up looking like a disaster. Deals were going to be our savior, right? Deals were going to be how we knew, you know, where we were running on, you know, what price we were going to pay, what we could expect. Uh, and for the most part, that's kind of come true, right? But the reality of deals, when you try to execute a programmatic deal, instead of that simple handshake, looks a little bit more like this. So you have two parties who really aren't succeeding in that simple handshake, right? They're trying to do different things. This is actually a live feed to our New York office right now. <laughs> These people are practicing over and over and over again in order to get this right. Um, but uh, you know, the reality of a deal, it's, it's so great, I want to keep on watching it. <laughs> there we go. The reality of a deal uh, looks like this. You've got a buyer, you've got a seller, and often uh, when you're working across multiple platforms, you end up with support teams having to get involved from both platforms. Has that happened from anybody who's running deals here before? I suspect it has. Um, that's a lot of steps and a lot of pain in order to execute a simple programmatic deal. In reality, it takes about 16 steps. You know, that, that's a lot of pain, a lot of time, could, could maybe get it done in a day, but it often took two to three days to get a campaign up and running that was uh, using deal ID, working across an SSP, a DSP, uh, which makes you end up feeling like you're crawling across the finish line, right? It's a race you're never going to want to run again, even if you got to the finish. But let's talk about history again for a second. A year ago, at this summit, AppNexus started talking about relationships and deals. We got on the stage, we said, we're going to start working on this problem. What's happened in the last year? Well, we've been iterating with a small group of clients, all based in Europe, who have been helping us improve our partner center and deals product. And on May 7th, we launched into open beta to all of our clients our sort of the first version of our deals functionality. Now this has negotiation through our partner center and an activity stream in the product where you can communicate without having to pick up the phone, having to write emails. Uh, it's got targeting on the campaign level, it's got reporting. It really allows you to get deals done um, in a much better and easier way, right? So this first version cuts it down to there, right? We eliminated some steps. We felt pretty good about that, right? We eliminated five steps from the process. Now that's an improvement, but it, it, it wasn't enough, right? We weren't done yet. So later this month, we're announcing a new feature called Packages. Now Packages allow a seller to basically take, instead of having to do custom deals, they can create a standardized catalog of deals that they find buyers are most often interested in, and they can share that with a buyer who can then come in and with one click can select a package and immediately target that deal with the campaign. Eliminating the need to share deal IDs, 
uh, to really go through a lot of the hassle of setting up a custom campaign, it really cuts out more of the inefficiency. So we went from here to here, right? Much fewer steps in the process. So that is about five plus steps. Now it's five steps if you don't have to involve support, which we think, and we're seeing already, is really happening less and less, that support never has to really get involved um, when you're doing a console-to-console -console deal where the buyer and seller are on our platform. Now that's outstanding, right? We feel really good about that. And so now you're like this guy in the light blue, right? You're crossing the finish line, and you're just pumped up. Your competitors are falling down because you're executing deals successfully. Um, we still aren't done, but we feel like we're getting to a point where we're really proud of our deals product, um, and we're really excited about it. And instead of just having me talk about it, we're going to actually go for the world's record for the fastest deal attempt here live on stage today. Now they say, don't do a live demo, right? And instead of one live demo, we're gonna have two different computers going on, two different people who don't work for AppNexus, um, to come up and execute this for us. So to, to go for the world's, uh, by the way, we contacted the Guinness Book of World Records, who first wanted to charge us $700, and then told us we don't have a world record for online or you know, fastest advertising you know, deal transaction done. So we're gonna set that record now here today. Um, performing in the role of our buyer is Ed Thomas, the head of product at Acuin. Uh, our seller is Benjamin Christie, the founder and president of Gourmet Ads, an online uh, food recipes network. And our commentator and officiator of the world record is Suzanne O'Kelly, our lead product manager on deals. So to set the context, Ed, what, what type of, you know, what, are, what is your client looking for here today? So today, my very local um, sausages client, Bangers and Mash, you may have heard of them. Um, they are lining up to launch a great new range of grilling sausages, ideal for the barbecue. They've got a great range of flavors. They've got mm. a brilliant health message somehow. Sounds good. And, um, and you know, we're, we're looking for some, uh, some, some great inventory to, to support that activity. So, um, well, we're, and we've got, we're all about recipes and food. So we've got some great inventory that would fit that at this time of year. All right, let's see it happen. Uh oh. Uh oh <laughs> Okay. You might want to reset that clock in just one second. Um, the pressure. It certainly is. Uh, someone backstage Ooh. deserves yeah. All right. a beer right about now. So I'm going to go head straight into Partner Center because I suspect that my preferred partner Gourmet Ads has got some great inventory for this, combining their first party data to meet my requirements. So I'm just gonna say, hey, Benjamin. Right. It looks like uh, Ed is composing a message to Benjamin, asking him if there's any inventory that might be good for his advertiser, bangers and mash. Let's take a look. Oh, he's providing a lot of context. Now, Partner Center is great for communicating with your partners. Uh, gourmet Ads and Acuin go way back. Okay, that message is sent. I'm gonna head over here. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, it looks like something came through already. Benjamin is going to click on the, uh, the email. It looks like it's a message from Ed. <laughs> he it's clicks the link. That works. <laughs> I, I, I got the message, Mike. We'll take full credit for the email. <laughs> um, okay, now he's in Partner Center, and he's gonna go ahead and use our activity stream to respond. Uh, to Ed, and it looks like that's sent. So let's go back over here, refresh. Oh, oh, the message worked again. All right, so now there's a conversation going back and forth between these two players, um, and you'll notice that Ed, uh, Ben had sent Ed the link to a package catalog. So the catalog is what, what uh, Pat mentioned. Um, we put together a list of packages and it's a way for the seller to merchandise to the buyer um, exactly what they have on offer for deals. Mm, so this is interesting. I'm seeing health. <laughs> Summer recipes, well that sounds good. What about this? Oh, look at this, barbecue contacts, chicken, salad, desserts. That sounds perfect, grilling. Wow. 
I'm going to get that in my cart right now. Um, Excellent. OK. I think that'll do me for now. So let's just grab that. Let's do that. Wow, so, that was quick. Yeah, so just one second here. Usually, this process of getting a deal from one party to the other can take days. Uh, you have to wait for a manual effort to happen on both sides. And we've managed to eliminate all the manual effort, and you get it instantly. You can see that ID right there on the screen. I think I might just go ahead and set this live. With one more click, he's able to target the deal right to a campaign. Um, he's selected one that we already set up just for the purposes of the demo. Um, but we're pulling in, the system pulls in all the information from the deal to eliminate as much possibility for human error as possible. So all that Ed has to do now is set this deal active, save it, and voila, everything's done. So, now, Ben's been over there busily working, but he's not in the dark. He's not received another email. <laughs> All right, here it is. Look at that. It's telling him that um, Ed had created a deal from the package catalog that he got. So he's gotten feedback through the system that his package catalog worked and sort of is, is generating a lead. Now, if he goes to Partner Center one more time. and he goes into that deals tab, he's going to see that there's a new deal sitting there, the summer recipes deal uh, that Ed, we just saw Ed create. right? And so he might see some information about that deal that helps him understand how it's doing. So for example, the, the green check mark up there tells him that Ed has already targeted that deal. And you can see the deal below has what we call deal health on it. And um, that's showing the bid response rate. It's showing how many impressions are being seen. And it updates every 10 minutes. So it's similar to Pulse. It's giving him a live update of how that deal is going in case he needs to troubleshoot or reach out to Ed and say, hey, do you need help with anything um, if your campaign's not bidding? Um, and in about 10 minutes, we'll see deals, we'll see impressions start to flow on the Summer Recipes deal. So that's it. I think we can call this a done deal. Stop the clock. <laughs> All right, so I was personally hoping for under five minutes, and the login difficulties had me worried, but <laughs> we accomplished that. I think, I hope everyone's tweeting that a new world record for a deal happened in four minutes and 38 seconds between Gourmet Ads and Acuin. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, but before we let these gentlemen leave the stage, um, they are experts in deals who have been using our platform, and I'd love to have each of them say a few words about their experiences um, working with deals so far. So, <laughs> Up first, Benjamin. Thanks, Pat. So if you don't know about Gourmet Ads, we're a uh, food advertising network. We directly manage 500 plus uh, food and recipe sites. And you know, it's fair to say we put ads next to recipes. Most of our audience is grocery buyers. They're the person that are putting the, uh, the groceries into the cart. And uh, we've been doing programmatic since 2011. As a, as a rough guide, last month we sold 57% of our inventory programmatically. So back in January, Suzanne asked me if I'd like to be in part of the uh, alpha program for, for deals. And through to the open beta to last, well, now, uh, we're running about 40 plus deals. I think it's actually 46. A few of the guys in the US closed some deals overnight. So we're up at 46. Half of those are console to console, and the other half are external bidders. Um, they kind of fall into two buckets that we're kind of seen speaking to trading desks and, and, and other deal, deal, uh, deal buyers. And they're either client-specific campaigns, which are usually based on a brand with a start and an end date, or they're evergreen deals, which are sort of go on forever, so to speak. And we're finding for those, those uh, evergreen deals that they're probably setting up three or four different type of deals from like uh, IAB Rising Stars right down to run of network. So when we started to look at deals and understand how we could sell them, we started to carve up our inventory. That's a food pun. Uh, and we, they fall into sort of three buckets. So they're either content based and we break our inventory up on uh, cuisine, ingredient or recipe and we do that with Grape Shot. An example there is the chicken recipe. So if someone wanted to buy all the chicken inventory. Um, then we look at audience, so we have our own first party data of grocery buyers, and then we can pair things like age and demographics on top of it. And the last is uh, either ad size based or placement on the page, so think viewability, think above the fold and things like that. 
Here's a, an example of our summer recipes package that we put together for, for Ed. And you'll notice that it's a whole heap of segments which are based on grape shot segments that we've built. built. So we've got grilling there, we've got salads, cocktails, things like that. So all relevant, um, relevant pages of, of content that's going to be used for the advertiser. So what have we learned? I think that the first thing we've learned, apart from starting the conversation in, in deals, is that the conversation has to go on from that point. You have to talk to the buyers, you have to talk to the technical people, and actually have a conversation. And also right through to the end of the campaign to understand what worked and what didn't work. I think one of the beauties of deals is that if something's not working in the middle of a flight, it's really, really easy to change the deal. We found that uh, establishing and naming convention's been really important, particularly from reporting. I'm sure the guys at AppNext are gonna add more functional functionality to the deal setup. But now reporting, um, coming up with, like this is our naming convention, which is buyer name, brand, targeting, and account manager is good for, for reporting as well as commissioning uh, account managers. Think of deals as a sales process. And you know, some of the things we've done to, to start that sales process is building a deal guide, and it's a five-page guide from pretty much, and I use another food pun, an a la carte menu of what can be done. We've changed our Salesforce opportunity windows to include deals now, and we've also built out some debugging for our trafficking team. I think probably the last point on price is, you know, where do we price these deals? Well, I don't have the perfect answer. AppNexus doesn't have the perfect answer. But it's, right now, it's somewhere between open exchange and what we'd sell on a direct basis. It may change, and a demand will definitely probably change the pricing. But um, so far, that's, that's where we are on, on deals. So Acuin, like every other trading desk on the planet, has had an amazing last year. 2013 um, was pretty great. Um, just some top line stats for what we've been up to. Um, as demand has exploded, so too has our needs uh, to service that demand. So we've increased hiring headcount. We've grown the team almost 4x year on year. Um, we've almost tripled the number of advertisers. But more than that, we've increased the number of campaigns each of those advertisers are doing. They're bringing more and more complicated problems to us to solve using programmatic ad tech. Um, around 70% of our advertisers today use Acuin month to month. Um, we're looking for 100%. We'll keep going, and hopefully this year we're going we're gonna to land that. Um, but it's the complexity that I really want to just mention today um, and why we think deals are a great part of that. So, People are coming to us, advertisers are coming to us with a lot of requests for more granular control about where their ads are appearing. They want to understand placements, they want to understand whitelists, they want to understand safety, security, fraud. All of these factors go into the, the what am I actually buying here. Um, so deals offer a great way for us to manage that and to collaborate with our supply partners to get better access to the placements and, and domains that work really, really well for our campaigns. Another area is value add technologies. So these are people who are in the value chain who are adding value to impressions as they pass through the ad tech pipeline. Um, there's a great number of these specializing in things like context, adding data, adding viewability information. We're finding that deals are a great way of getting access to that inventory on a first look basis ahead of the rest of the market. That usually comes at a premium and we're willing to pay it where it's going to work. Um, first Look, I just touched on there. First Look is a, is a great tool for advertisers to make sure that they're getting in front of the audience they want. If they're bidding, they should be winning. Um, if, if, they're, if they're bidding randomly, then they're not really thinking about what they're doing. So First Look for us, and obviously Deals is a great way of doing that, securing that priority access to inventory. Guaranteed viewability. Guaranteed, in this sense, is a really, really nasty old word because it... Uh, it means a lot of things to different people, but um, using, uh, using, using kind of private access deals to get access to inventory that comes with an expectation of higher viewability, we've seen great success with that as well. And again, that comes back down to the collaboration that Benjamin was referring to of about buyers and sellers working together to discover what's working on a campaign by campaign basis. Um, this is the big number though. Um, deal setup is traditionally quite expensive for us, both in terms of time, training, debugging, bug fixes, problems, issues that we never thought would have happened before, just suddenly coming out of the blue and disrupting campaigns. 
Um, that's disruptive not just for us in the trading desk, but also for the advertiser who's asking, hey, why is this not running? Why is that not running? It pulls in resources from creative ad servers to do deduplication reporting to work out which ads are serving, which ones aren't. Deals can be very, very expensive, but I think what we've just demoed today is that there's a significant cost reduction by the single platform view of deals that we've, we've, we've just showed this morning. Great. Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, so I hope that my uh, introduction as well as our four minute and was it 43 second uh, world record deal um, as well as the thoughts from these gentlemen uh, have you thinking that executing a deal with AppNexus is uh, as easy as executing a simple handshake. Uh, at least we're trying to get there. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.